All right, let's talk Brock Purdy going up against a Joe Barry-led defense. Some Packers fans might be pretty concerned right off the bat. I already had a video about the other side of the ball, Jordan Love, and how he'll attack the Niners' defense. And talked a lot about how that's you know good on good. A lot of good players across the board there. This, not so much. If you look over at the you know uh, the chart I make for all of these videos, uh, the you know where each team ranks in the PFF grades, uh, you see that. Uh, definitely PFF favors San Francisco in almost every area. Not every area. There is an exception, but almost every area. Although I should mention, maybe it's not quite as dramatic as some might think. You look at the Packers, you know, they've been kind of middle of the pack grade-wise at everything this season, which is, I think, significantly lower than most people might expect. People have talked about this defense like it's the worst in football. I would say it's a bottom 10 defense, but I don't think it's the worst defense in football. But still, again, that being said, it's the 49ers offense, so it's still a lot of mismatches, right? Uh, the Niners' ninth best passing uh, with Brock Purdy's grade uh, and best receiving going up against the 16th best coverage. The clear advantage for Green Bay is, well, Green Bay's pass rush hasn't been otherworldly. Uh, the Niners have not pass blocked particularly well this season. Their grades have not been great. Obviously, Trent Williams is fantastic, but it's kind of the depth that has created some issues. Specifically, I think Colton McKivitz, the right uh, tackle, and some of the interior guys as well. In fact, I would say both guards uh, for them have struggled this season. Uh, you know, uh, they've actually gotten solid uh, center play this year, but with you know two different guys, uh, Feliciano and Brendel. But the you know the, the guards and the right tackle, that's where you can potentially leave yourself open in the pass blocking game. The run blocking, however, best in football. So kind of weird stuff there. Uh, again, you know. Packers haven't been terrible at run defense, but not terrible is usually not nowhere near good enough against San Francisco, who also has the third best rushing grade. So I think they'll run the ball and come up. I mean, we know how the Niners operate, right? They do stuff like this, where they're going to, you know, uh, for the Eagles here, they're going up against the, it's such a cover three zone blitz. The Niners, who, you know, they run the ball relatively effectively. It's actually weird. I think people forget the Eagles were in this game for a good chunk of it. Look, three minutes left uh, in this, you know, second quarter. Uh, this was, you know, the second half, it was all Niners, and that's kind of where the Eagles died, really. But, you know, here, anyway. That was, you know, irrelevant to what we're talking about. Uh, it's going to be a kind of a clever play action where they're going to fake a handoff to Debo Samuel, who's in motion, and then, you know, uh, throw over the middle. Uh, so, you know, the over the middle part is normal, but the kind of the way they're doing the play action is unique. Watch as one Purdy runs this play. You see, you know, in yellow, that is George Kittle, the yellow circle there. And, you know, uh, Philadelphia linebacker who I've circled in black, look at how far out of position he is. I get it. The Eagles, they had guys out of position, not the best linebackers. And, you know, I do think Quay Walker and uh, Devontae Campbell are significantly better. And that could be where the scheme is won or lost. Can they get in position and not get fooled? I don't think they'll get fooled as badly as this is happening, but... They're going to get out of position at times. It's the 49ers. It's what they do. Watch Purdy make this throw, and they're able to hit George Kittle, and Kittle is able to do some good stuff after the catch because that's what George Kittle does. So being able to do stuff like that is it's going to matter. It, it just is. Also, something like this, you know, we talk about the uh, – you know, corners for Green Bay. And I think there has been maybe some weaknesses there, to put it mildly. But another thing they're going to have to do is be able to make tackles, which I think has been a pretty significant weakness for Green Bay. They have not done a great job at making tackles. And you're going to have to make tackles against this 49ers, uh, you know, team if on the outside, right? Uh, you know, this wasn't about, uh, it, it's involving two different teams, but just kind of a quote I liked. Vita Vea, when talking with the Lions, said, I kind of put it very simply where he said, they make the small guys tackle and the big guys run. And like, yeah, that's kind of what the Niners do as well, right? They make the small guys tackle. That's what they're going to do here on a, you know, it's technically a halfback screen, but to Debo Samuel, who's lined up as a halfback. So, you know, getting a, the ball in a good player's hands. Watch as you're going to see Purdy quickly flips the ball. I believe this might have even been a backwards pass, but either way, right here, well-blocked play. They pick up the first down. And also, if you're going to, you know, play the 49ers, not only do you want to be able to shed some blocks on the outside, you're going to have to tackle. As you see, the Eagles, not great tackling. We certainly saw that, you know, last night against Tampa Bay. But, you know, Samuel's able to run forward and pick up a good chunk of yards right there. And again, Green Bay, they're going to have to be better than Philadelphia was. Let's just put it that way. However, I talked about the Lions because they have a similar scheme. Well, let's talk about the Lions and how the Packers 
went into Detroit and beat them on Thanksgiving, right? Remember that game that felt like this could be the the Lions, you know, big coming out party. They can you know, win on Thanksgiving. It could be great. And while the Lions are still doing all right for themselves right now, the Packers were able to kind of win this game and it really became their key moment. And that's kind of what jump started this whole situation for them. And their defense did make enough plays in this one. So how did it do it? Well, uh, you know, I think to me, a play like this could be a key play. It's going to be actually just a three-man rush for the uh, Packers on this one. So send an extra guy back, which, again, you know, the 49ers, they like to be on script so much. But Joe Barry, say what you want about him. He mixes things up constantly. To a fault, he mixes things up. That's actually his criticism is that he sometimes puts guys in really tough positions. But in a game like this, I could actually see it helping because, you know, extra man in coverage here, you first see Goff take a snap, take the snap and look towards his left, and that underneath route doesn't seem to be open. But the Green Bay Packer player I've circled in black, you see how far he's moved over towards the top of the screen. He's doing that because he knows he has help more underneath because it's, again, just a three-man rush. So there's four guys over the middle instead of your traditional three. But for Goff, he looks over, he sees that and says, oh, well, then I wonder what's going on towards the right side of the field. Over towards the right side of the, the field, you know, it's kind of a, a joke, but, you know, uh, number one corner, Preston Smith, right? He's on Amon Ross St. Brown. Like, that seems like a massive mismatch right here. It is, but what they're both doing is creating contact, right? Slow down guys at the line. Get them off their rhythm. I think being physical is a key thing that the Packers can do and a thing they should do. So Goff ends up looking over in that direction because, again, you know, he saw the player on the top of the screen very far over there, figured maybe over the middle could be open, but now it's not because there's still enough players over there and the contact, you know, slowed them down. Eventually, that Lion player is open right here, but again, Goff already looked away from that because he figured, well, there's, there's help over there. Let me look on the other side of the field. You can't see the whole field at once. If you can change things up, the opposing quarterback might not know exactly what's going on. Brock Purdy can get off his game if you mix things up. Eventually, Jared Goff decides to scramble up and only picks up a couple of yards. And listen, Purdy can make stuff happen, uh, you know, if a play breaks down and doesn't work right away. That's one of his real assets he brings to the 49ers and why he's had a lot of success is what he can do off script. But again, if you're getting per Brock Purdy to run the football, you're winning. The ball, if the ball's not in George Kittle or Brandon Ayuk or Debo Samuel or Christian McCaffrey's hands, and instead it is in uh, Brock Purdy's hands, that is a win. Something like this is interesting too. So what's going to happen here is again, this is going to actually be a, a blitz, a zone coverage blitz, right? Mixing things up, not letting the opposing quarterback know what's going on. You see the concept on the screen for the Lions and what do you do? I mean, there is going to be two one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside. Probably you want to just throw it to one of them, right? Like Goff takes the snap. He's going to look over and right here you see that, okay, Really, I mean, you could take a deep shot. Like, that's one option you could you could do if you wanted to. You could throw underneath, but that's not going to be great. Personally, I think Purdy probably would take some deep shots, and then you just have to wonder, can Green Bay win? If they're in these situations, like, can you get J.R. Alexander to... I mean, hey, he had the interception against Dallas, right? Can he make something happen? That's what you hope. The other option, though, is if Purdy decides he doesn't want to take a deep shot and tries to make something else happen, can you get him to hold on to the ball for too long like you're going to see Goff do here? Watch as Goff does hold on to the ball for too long and ends up, that that's a fumble right there, and the Packers return it for a touchdown. Could that be a way that they can make something happen? It, it potentially could. There's that opportunity for Green Bay is if they can get certain plays for Purdy to hold on to the ball for too long, getting some turnovers I think they need turnovers in this game. I think they need to win the turnover battle. And, I, you know, I don't think it's out of the question that they could turn the ball over offensively as well. So they're going to need to, I think, get some get some plays to go their way. Final predictions here is you see that, you know, San Francisco offensive points per drive is an otherworldly 2.89 easily the best in football right now. It's fantastic. Like, I talked up the Packers offensive points per drive in my last uh, video, but that was, you know, 0 0.7 points per drive lower uh, than what the Niners are doing. They're just on another level right now. On top of this, the Packers defense of points per drive hasn't been great. So, I do think there is potential to get the Niners off their game, but I think when it works that way, they have to get turnovers. It can't just be getting stops because, be, really, I mean, getting three stops in a row seems unlikely. I think the Niners will run the ball effectively in this game. I think they will get guys out of position effectively in this game. I think that they will score a good amount of points in this game. 
my prediction is uh, 2.7 points per drive, which is a, it's on the high side. It is. I'm expecting a lot of points here, which again, that's it's it's not inconceivable, right? The thing about predictions is this is always just what I think is the most likely outcome. But I think I really think there's like a thousand different out potential outcomes, right? So like. Just just because this is the most likely one doesn't mean that it's what's going to happen, obviously. In fact, you know, it's, it's almost guaranteed to not happen, right? Like, if you ask me, would my final score prediction be right or wrong, I'm going to say wrong every time, right? It's really hard to get it exactly right no matter what. So my final score prediction, I am going uh, Packers 24, Niners uh, 30 here, which is actually not that different than what I had last week for the Packers. So hey, if you're a Packers fan, certainly no reason to view this as a death sentence, right? Anything can happen. But yeah, I am leaning San Francisco here. I think they deserve to be favored with what they've done all year. And again, that offense against the Packers defense, um, it's kind of a tale as old as uh, time at this point. Although, of course, I should mention, like, listen, I don't think the fact that Colin Kaepernick beat Aaron Rodgers a decade ago really has a huge impact on this specific game. Like, I don't know how much I take into account uh, history, although even recent history, the Niners have had the Packers number. But I think even throw out the history, which I did, I, I didn't pay attention to that in making my predictions. I just think the Niners are really good. I think the Packers, uh, you know, it's been an amazing season. Who knows? If they can get a couple turnovers, right? I do think it's that would be, that could be enough to swing it, but I think they need that. I, don't, I think that I can't really see a scenario where the Packers don't get turnovers and win this game. So that's just how I view it right now. But yeah, those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.